Hey, a couple more related rates problems. Let's see what we have here. Um, okay, here is the first one. I think there's only two today. There were only two yesterday. Okay, this one, let's see. Reading the problem, a boat is pulled into a dock by means of a rope attached to a pulley. Um, so I don't know, maybe I should color code this a little bit. Let's get some color to this problem. Hang on just a sec. Let me color this. There we go. Isn't that colorful? All right, so. We have a boat being pulled into a dock, a funny rectangular dock, by way of a pulley. Uh, let's see, there's a rope attached to the boat, and the rope is, uh, let's see, at a point 10 feet below the pulley. Now, one thing I need to do to make this picture make a little bit more sense, 10 feet below the pulley, that means this distance right here is 10. So that distance is 10 feet below the pulley. Uh, the rope is being pulled through the pulley at a rate of 20 feet per minute. Now, there is a rate. We're going to have to figure out what that rate is for. <clears throat> at what rate were, will the boat be approaching the dock when 25 feet of rope is out? So, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is identify what's changing and what's not changing. We're definitely dealing with a triangle here, a right triangle. If the rope is being pulled in, I know that distance is changing. And then the boat is going to be getting closer to the dock, so this distance is changing. Um, and so those are my variables. So my rates, let's see, the rope is pulled in at 20 feet per minute. So somebody is standing over here pulling the rope this way. And if the rope's being pulled that way, X is actually getting, shr getting shrinker. X is getting smaller, so dx dt. And it's getting smaller by 20 feet per minute. So x is decreasing by 20 feet per minute. So 20 feet per minute is going to be the rate that x changes. At what rate will the boat approach the dock? So the distance from the boat to the dock is y. It's asking at what rate does y change? Um, that's dy dt, not x. Um, when there is 25 feet of rope out, and 25 feet that would refer to x. So we're looking at a point in time when x is 25. But that's not always true. That's going to change. So I'm going to put that in this little flashy thing to remind me not to plug in 25 yet. So now that I've pulled all of the information, we need to come up with some kind of a formula that's going to tie all of this together. Uh, and this one's going to be another Pythagorean theorem problem. Um, a squared plus b squared is c squared, except in this problem it's y squared. Now, this length is not changing, so I'll go ahead and keep it at 10 is equal to x squared. And once I find the formula, if there's not much else I can do, I'm going to go ahead and find the derivative. So let's do the derivative. y squared, derivative is 2y dy dt. Uh, derivative of 10 squared is 0, so that goes away. And derivative of x squared is 2x dx dt. Then I'm actually going to do one more thing to make this problem a little bit more manageable. If you divide both sides by 2, these 2's cancel. And you're simply left with y dy dt is equal to x dx dt. Not a huge difference. Uh, it doesn't change the problem a whole lot, but it does at least get rid of a couple of numbers to make, the, make things a little bit uh, less problematic when it comes time to arithmetic. So now we start plugging in. Um, y, ooh, I don't know what y is, so we're going to have to find y. Uh, but we could find y with Pythagorean theorem. If I know that x is 25, then I know y squared plus 10 squared is equal to 25 squared. And so we would solve that. Um, y squared is going to be that 625 minus 100 is 525. And the square root of 525 is 5 root 21. And I just punched that in the calculator really quick while it was paused. Um, so we get 5 root 21 for y, and that would be measured in feet. And again, that is not always true, so we don't want to plug that in at the beginning of the problem. But since I have already taken the derivative, I'll plug in 5 root 21 for y. dy is what we're looking for, so that's going to remain unknown. So dy dt is equal to x that was given to us. x is, where is x? x is 25. And dx is negative 20. So there's our problem. Uh, we'll solve for dy dt. So dy dt 
it is uh, 25 times negative 20 all divided by 5 square root of 21. Um, and y would be measured in, let's look at y. y is a length, and I'm measuring length in terms of feet, so that's going to be feet per, and my time is in minutes. So that's going to be feet per minute. And I'm okay if you stop right there. If you want to clean that up, um, let's see, I know 5 goes into 25 five times. So you could clean that up into negative 100 over the square root of 21 feet per minute. And I am perfectly okay with you leaving a radical in the denominator. One of the stupid rules of math that really doesn't need to be enforced. Doesn't accomplish a whole lot other than aesthetics and uh, some archaic rules that have just been sticking around because people think we have to teach everything as it is in the book. So anyway, uh, there's our answer. There's our answer. It takes a little bit of time. I have to scroll up and down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Okay, moving on. Um, another problem, and the last problem, grain pouring from a chute at a rate of 8 feet cubed per minute. Oh, now look at that unit, 8 feet cubed per minute. That looks like a rate of change of volume. Feet cubed is a measure of volume, so I know that dvdt, the rate of volume, is 8 cubed per minute. Okay, um, It forms a conical pile whose height is, ooh, whose altitude is always twice the radius. So I'm going to pull that information out. That's saying the altitude, A, I'm going to say H. Is that okay? Altitude and height are the same thing. Altitude equals height. So when it says altitude is twice the radius, I'm going to say the height of this cone is twice the radius. That may come in handy. That might come in handy um, quite a bit. <clears throat> so let's see. How fast is the altitude of the pile increasing altitude? That's making me angry. Height. How fast is the height increasing? Okay, so that's a dh question. How fast is the height increasing? dh dt is something when the pile is six feet high. So we're looking at a point in time when the height is six feet. And it hadn't happened yet, but always pay attention to units. Every now and then you'll get one that'll say uh, the altitude or like the volume is in feet per minute or feet cubed per minute, but then they'll give you a length in inches or yards or something like that, and you have to make a unit conversion. So just always be aware of your units that they line up. Um, let's see, so looking at this problem, let's see, we have dh, we have h, we have dv. Uh, we need the formula for the cone, the volume of the cone. And I will give you volume formula, so that's one-third pi r squared h. Yeah, yeah. So one-third pi r squared h. And then we have to figure out what we're going to do with this. Now, what we've done in the past is we've done derivatives. Now, we've actually done a derivative very similar to this one today. So we would isolate the one-third pi times r squared h. And I'm going to pause it while I work that derivative. All right, so that was a product rule. So I did the derivative of r squared times h, and I got this. Now the problem we run into is when it's time to plug in our information. dv, let's see, um, grain is being added, so dv is, is positive, and that would be 8 equals one-third pi. And then I start plugging in. I have 2. Uh, the radius, hmm, they didn't give us radius. dr dt, uh, they didn't give us dr dt. h they gave us, that'd be 6. Uh, here again, I'm at radius squared. I don't have r. And dh dt is what we're looking for. That is a buttload of things that we don't know. Um, now, they did give us this h equals 2r. And we could actually use that to figure out some stuff. Um, but what I'm actually going to do, instead of working the problem out from this, well, I'm actually going to make a change to what I did at the very beginning before I start taking derivatives. I'm going to do something with this problem. I'm going to erase everything that I just did. I probably should have given you all a warning. How many of you all paused it and started keeping up with me? Sorry. I'm going to erase this, and I'm going to make this problem a lot easier. I'm going to make this problem a lot easier. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a substitution on the front end. I know that R and H are closely related, and they give us the relationship right here. H is always twice the radius. So what I could do 
is I could substitute in. I could say, all right, well, my volume is one-third pi um, r squared, and then I could take out the h, and since h is equal to 2r, plug in 2r for h. The reason I don't want to do that is because they gave us the height, and we're looking for dh dt. So we don't want to eliminate the h's in the equation. Since dh dt is what we want, I better keep my h's. So instead of plugging in for h, I'm actually going to plug in for r. So if h is equal to 2r, that means, I'm going to use my advanced math here, that means that h divided by 2 is equal to r. And I can actually take this and plug it in right here and say that 1 third pi instead of r, I'm going to say h over 2 squared times h, and I'm going to clean that up. So I get volume is 1 third pi, h over 2 squared is h squared over 4, and then we'll multiply that out, that's volume is um, pi times h times h is pi h cubed, 3 times 4 is 12, so that's going to be what, pi over 12 h cubed. And so I clean it up. Notice I haven't done any calculus yet. All I did is some substitution. I haven't done derivatives or anything fancy. But now look at the kind of derivative I've created. It was originally a product rule, but I've gotten rid of the product, and I've turned it into just a good old normal power rule. That's not what I wanted to do. So now instead of having to do product rule, I can just do the derivative of h cubed, which is 3h squared dh dt. And uh, the derivative of volume is going to be dv dt. And the pi over 12 is a constant, so it just comes along for the ride. Uh, and now that I've got this derivative, I start plugging in what I know. I know that dv is 8, and I know that my height is 6, and dh is what we're looking for. So I'll plug that in. dv is 8, pi over 12 times 3 times 6 squared dh dt. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, we clean that up. So 8 equals pi over 12 times 3 times 6 squared. Ah, 36. I'm just going to write 3 times 36. Is that okay? And then for the sake of making this a little bit more manageable, I'm going to start canceling. 3 goes into 12 4 times, so that cancels. Ooh, sexy! 4 goes into 36 9 times. So we're left with 8 is equal to 9 pi dh dt. And dh dt, well, this one ended up taking a while, didn't it? Is 8 divided by 9 pi. And height would be measured in feet. But this is height with respect to time, and my time is minutes, which you can still see up there just barely. So there is our answer to this problem. It took a little bit of time to work it out, um, but there we go. There we go. So if you can make that substitution, if they give you enough information to say like h equals 2r, eliminate your variables. Knock it down to just one variable. Make your derivative a little bit nicer. Um, we could have worked it out that first way with the product rule, but it would have just been a little bit hairier, I believe. So anyway, there we go, and uh, see you Tuesday.